I recently had one of the most impactful calls of my trading career. I spent an hour on call with an algo trader who has had 100k months with his fully automated strategies. The insights were both inspiring and intimidating. Here are the five key takeaways I wanted to share. First is diver diversification is key. He runs 30 plus strategies all at once. The majority take intraday trades and close before the end of the day with a small proportion swinging trades. This results in lower drawdowns and more consistent returns. As Ray Dalio says, it's the holy grail. Making sure you have diversification in your algo portfolio is just key. There is no master algo that just works on every market, every time frame, every symbol. You want to have a lot of different algos um, that have different kind of objectives or systems based on you know, mean reversion, trend following, arbitrage, really anything, uh, and that combine together and work well to um, lower each other's drawdowns, recover them better, work in different types of market cycles, um, that is ideally the goal. Next is using uncorrelated strategies. The majority of his strategies trade futures indexes. You'd be right to assume that surely they are correlated, no? Especially if they're trading the same symbol. This means that if one index goes down, the others are likely to follow, and this can be a problem for traders as it can lead to large losses if multiple strategies are losing money all at the same time because they are correlated. The way he mitigates this risk is by ex making sure each strategy trades on different timeframes and has unique parameters. This means that each strategy essentially is trading a different market even though they are all on the futures trading indexes. For example, one strategy might be on a 5 minute chart while another one might be on a 1 hour chart and they even may be on the same symbol but they'll have different entry and exit criteria. By diversifying his strategies across different timeframes and parameters, he's able to reduce his overall risk exposure. Even when, if one strategy is losing money, the others are likely to be making money, which helps offset the losses. And this is also a big part of like optimizing portfolios and testing portfolios of algo strategies. Uh, it's a whole new can of worms once you create like one algo and you're like, great, I've gone through the whole backtesting process, I've done robustness testing, this one's working live on the live market. And then you try and get into the world of combining them into a portfolio. Um, a lot of similar steps, but just a lot of extra things you need to be aware of and be careful of. Next is leverage can be the key to bigger profits. Now he runs about 30 plus strategies that takes a lot of capital, but it doesn't have to due to futures leverage. Leverage is a double-sided sword, but with robust backtested strategies, it can be a key contributor to bigger and bigger months. Plus you get many tax benefits for training futures in the US, I believe, at least from talking for him, it seems like he got a lot of tax benefits. Um, a key thing I'll say here is like the reason I love futures for my vehicle to trade algos and the reason I don't trade algos as much on like equities is because the leverage is way better. Uh, and normally when you're trying to create an algo portfolio, you're going to need a lot of capital. Um, and this is a big thing, especially why you'll see like quant firms have a huge amount of capital that is deployed and you'll see crazy numbers like the trading, you know, a billion a day or something like that. Um, and that's most of the time reason because you've got multiple systems working at the same time. Some may be higher frequency, so they're taking more trades. Some may be more long term, so they're taking up a big portion of your capital um, during that time. Uh, and there's a lot of those kind of nuances that come in. So ideally what you want is if you do have profitability in your systems, you want a good amount of leverage. Now, this isn't anything crazy. Um, it's, it's nothing like doing a crypto kind of leverage where you're just uh, risking a thousand bucks to try and make a million because you're using like a thousand X leverage or something. Uh, nothing like that. It's, it's just more the benefit that one contract, the amount of margin you need for that one contract isn't very high. Now, obviously, you'll still need to put in money there to make sure you can handle your drawdowns uh, and probably a bit more, you know, have some margin of safety. Um, but this is a big benefit compared to equities, which have higher margins than futures. Next is he focuses on intraday strategies. He has a heavy focus on intraday strategies, and this is for two main reasons. It reduces the tail risk from gap up slash gap downs. Intraday strategies are typically designed to close out before the end of the day, which reduces the risk of large overnight price gaps, especially in futures where they may not be very big on a percentage gain, but because of that amount of margin and leverage, uh, they can be very hurtful if you are holding over time, or they can be very fruitful as well. Next is to improve mental clarity when creating or tweaking strategies. Intraday strategies typically have a shorter time horizon than swing or position trading, which means there is less um, to track and monitor necessarily when you're going through it. And this also allows you to be separated from the market um, after that day is done. If you have swing strategies going on, it's very hard to detach and think clearly, uh, and you never really want to sacrifice mental clarity for a small boost in profits. Now, there is something to be said that you know, being able to hold overnight is a certain type of edge anyway, less people do it. So there is actually quite a lot of profitability there if you can do it correctly. Uh, but it, it is very difficult. And even for me, I, I wouldn't really venture into that realm at the moment, just because I think you need to, 
you need a lot of financial security you do need some um extra capital there to recover any you know outside losses because you don't know how big the gap can be based on the news uh, and you have to be very careful there's a lot of tail risk there and that's why he really doesn't focus on swing trading strategies and the ones he does have deployed are very very small you know using maybe one contract maybe even using micros um which still allows him to be you know extracting some edge from it but it doesn't take up too much margin and is not as risky uh, or at least it doesn't burn his mental capital during the day Next is there's always room for improvement. Despite his impressive profits, he acknowledges he hasn't mastered indexes. With a couple of strategies in gold and oil and other futures markets, he recognizes the potential for future growth of his current domain, but why rush the expansion when there's room for improvement? I hope these insights were very helpful and if you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below. And thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed it, please share it with another trader as well. I will keep on doing these kind of videos. You guys seem to really be liking them recently. So thank you so much for all the support. And I have even more um, great kind of trading insights and content coming out very soon.